Today on the show, we have none other than Ron Zombie, uh, the hardcore icon. Ron, uh, thank you for joining us today. Thank you guys for having us. You know I love Marks. That's right. <laughs> um, you, you've you been wrestling now for quite some time. Uh, you know, for some, we're, we're getting listens from all over the world right now. So for some of the people that are out there that don't know about Ron Zombie, um, how did you break into the business? I was broken in by Killer Kowalski in Malden, Massachusetts. Uh, I want to say around uh, 94, 95, somewhere around that time. Um, I was living in New Haven, Connecticut and driving to Boston two to three times a week while I worked a 50 hour a week job. So, uh, yeah, it's, there's one for youth. I couldn't do that today, but yeah, I broke it under Walter and uh, I wouldn't have had any other way. All right. Now, uh, were you always Ron Zombie or how did you come up with your character? Actually, uh, the blue meanie had part in it and, uh, a local DJ in Connecticut, Kevin Afternoon guy, who was no longer with us. Um, I would go to 104 outings, and he'd start, you know, just breaking my stone and say, hey, look, it's Rob Zombie's brother, Ron. And I'm like, well, I kind of need a wrestling name. That, that's kind of cool. <laughs> and I told Meany about it, and he's like, you know, of course you're Ron Zombie, and that was just, that was it. You know, I've, I've had to do a, a couple of matches under a different moniker when I was working for another promotion years ago that didn't want us wrestling anywhere else. I was uh, shown off the Shogun of Harlem, and I was Nurse Zombie, which I wasn't too proud of for a short time with the outpatient. <laughs> uh, we hear that you even had a conversation with Rob Zombie, who gave you permission to use his music. Um, what did he think about you? Again, going back to Radio 104, Kevin the Afternoon Guy, they were sponsoring Jason Knight's Assault Championship Wrestling, and they had uh, the... The Merry Mayhem tour was Ozzy and Rob Zombie, and they had a meet greet with Zombie. They brought me in to meet Rob for the first time, and actually wasn't the first time. I was in the movie Airheads, the scene where Zombie was playing in, but that was years before my wrestling career. And uh, they said, Rob, we'd like to meet you, but we'd like to introduce you to Ron Zombie. And he said, Ron Zombie? And he kind of looked perplexed. And I said, yeah, Rob, I kind of borrowed your name. I wrestle. I hope you don't mind. And Rob's a mark. <laughs> and Rob got really excited and started, you know, who you wrestle for, how long you've been wrestling. So I, I, cut the con- I, I cut the conversation back to where the starting point was. And I said, well, are you cool with this? He's like, yeah, make as much money off as you can. I looked around the packed room. I said, well, there's witnesses. That's a verbal agreement. And took it from there. He was really cool about it and uh, seemed to get a kick out of it. So every time we're in the area with Northeast wrestling, I make sure the flyer Woodbury, Connecticut, so Rob sees the posters. Oh, nice. You wrestle for Northeast Wrestling amongst other uh, North, Northeastern companies. Uh, what are some of your highlights of your career so far, would you say? Um, you know, there's there's so many, man. I've been doing this for so long. i got to say um, winning the Northeast Wrestling title from Xavier was, was huge. There was probably about 1,400 people in the Bristol Central High School, and just listening to that place for up when I won the title was – I. You know, Kurt Adonis is all too proud to show me it constantly and just hear that crowd erupt is, is, is you know, breathtaking. And and to be in the ring with some of my, you know, some of my heroes, guys like Tommy Dreamer, Mick Foley, uh, Balls Mahoney, Stevie Richards, Raven, guys like that, you know, to be able to share the ring with those guys is just phenomenal. You know, I, I couldn't, I've never worked for WWE, I've never worked for WCW, and I couldn't have had a better career now you just mentioned um, some of the some ECW alumni. You have more, you know, for for crying out loud, you call yourself the the hardcore icon. Do you wish that you could have, you know, wrestled for ECW back in the heyday? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, that's that's what actually what, what made me go over to actually pursue this was ECW and to an extent Mick Foley because. You know, when I grew up watching WWE, you were seven foot thirteen and six hundred pounds of muscle, or you weren't a superstar. And then ECW kind of changed that, and and Mick Foley, you know, wasn't your prototypical wrestler. You know, he wasn't the build of a wrestler. He wasn't the characteristics of a wrestler, and made a great career out of it. So, you know, seeing 
that really sparked a fire in me. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to pursue this. So I'm going to see what I can do with it. So, of course, you know, I would definitely have loved to work with ECW. I, I was just about the, the fail-safe guy. Every promoter in Connecticut that would bring an ECW alumni in, I was the guy booked to wrestle him. <laughs> so, you know, it's, I, I think I would have been the proper fit there. Another time, another place. All right, now speaking of the hardcore wrestling, speaking to the hardcore icon, uh, you suffered a pretty bad injury not too long ago. Um, you know, in, in the ring, uh, did you have any doubts that maybe you probably wouldn't return to the ring after that? Initially, absolutely. Um, you know, for those who don't know, I, I tore my ACL, MCL, PCL, meniscus all in one shot during a match in Poughkeepsie, New York. Uh, Brian Anthony, Tommy Dreamer few others were doing a six-man tables, ladders, and chairs match, and I came down on, off the apron in the ring on my, my right leg pretty awkwardly, and it just tore everything inside my knee, and uh, at that point, I, I swore off wrestling. I was done. I said, I'm not doing this anymore. Uh, I, I had my last match, and uh, it, it actually took me a while to find a doctor to do the surgery. The first surgeon I went to uh, denied me because there was so much damage and they had to find a surgeon that specialized in multi-ligament reconstruction and they found a doctor named Michael Joyce who was in Glastonbury, Connecticut. He was the team physician for UConn men's and women. And it took me a month after my chair to actually get in to see him because I was being bounced around so much. And when I saw him, he was pretty confident that he would get me back in a ring shape. And uh, he did. So, you know, he, my doctor, her believe it or not, someone went and talked to me to get back in the ring. And after thinking about it, I didn't want my last match being carried out. I wanted to go on my own, and I'm feeling great. And I don't see a last match in my foreseeable future. Well, speaking of matches, this Saturday you're wrestling in Bethany, Connecticut for Northeast Wrestling. Uh, you and, uh, I'm, I'm going to say, a longtime partner, Bull Dread, are taking on the Battle Brothers with Showtime Stevie Stamos, um, what what kind of do you do you enjoy the tagging, or would you rather be doing singles, or do you just enjoy wrestling in general? I enjoy wrestling in general. Um, I am more of a fan of the singles match, but I'm also a team player. You need me to do a tag match. I'm gonna do a tag match. You need me to do a six man match. I'm gonna do a six man match. You need me to do. A Cables, ladders, and chairs match. I just love going out there. I love hearing the crowd chant "Zombie." Um, you know, I, we were just in Waterbury, Connecticut, with the Hardy Boys last weekend, and you know, twelve hundred person gym. You know, everybody in the place chant "Zombie." It was goosebumps, you know. So as long as I'm out there and I'm having fun and I'm healthy, whatever they ask of me, I'm going to do. But I do enjoy singles better. I think. You know, I feel like it's be more of myself in a singles match. You know, it's it's easy tagging with Dread though. I I was one of his trainers at Jason Knight's school. And I've known Dread since the first time he stepped into a ring, so it's easy working with him. Um, and he listens well. That's what I tell him to do. <laughs> uh, now, uh, Zombie, uh, who who did you model your wrestling career or style after? Do you have any guys that uh, you know you throw back some moves to some of your favorites? There, there's guys I definitely borrow from. Uh, Bruiser Brody, uh, boot and a leg drop. Everybody thinks it was Hogan. Brody did it first. <laughs> uh, cactus, you know, every now and then I'll throw the cactus elbow out there. Uh, Funk, Kevin Sullivan. Yeah, like they're just, you know, those smash mouth, you know, brawlers. You know, it, it, I, I tip a nod to the hat to them. And those are guys that, you know, make me want to do this and made me want to do this as a kid. So I always got to you know, just pay tribute up to them. Now, Ron, uh, throughout your whole career, I mean, has, you, you've wrestled top names. You've wrestled er, anybody and everybody. Is there any regrets, though, you might have ever had that, like, man, I really wish I either did this show or I wish I went to this? Or have you ever had any of those just still rattling around in yeah, your head? Yeah, of course. Of course. You know, you, you, you look back and say, you know, Oh man, I wish I was on that, or I wish I did this. Um, you know, I, I wish I had a singles match with Sabu. I've only done a, 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 a four-way elimination with him. You know, I would love to have had a singles match with Sabu. Um, just never happened in the cards. You know, it's it's there's always going to be regret, but you know, mm-hmm. 
you, you live with it. You know, there's, there's things I wish I did, you know, that maybe differently. Um, but, you know, it's great. You know, I, I've had a great run. I've had, you know, a career that most of you guys are going to have. I've got to be in there with some of my heroes. Like I said, you know, Kevin Sullivan, I wrestled him for big time wrestling. It's on, uh, you can see it on the uh, movie, um, Part Subject to Change. You know, I've wrestled Walter Mahoney, who I was an immense fan of. Raven, you know, I, I practically had to pinch myself in the ring when I see Raven walking at me. You know, it's Mick Foley, you know, it's it's never been a secret that Mick's been a hero of mine, and he left a match with me and Dreamer tagging. You know, I've known Dreamer, I'm just going to kind of side skip this for a minute. As a fan, I would go to indie shows run by Tony Rumble, the late great Tony Rumble, and one for Connecticut. And he was bringing these young guys in, like Tommy Dreamer, like Chris Candido, like the Tasmaniac, well before ECW was ever around. This was like during the WCCW days. And uh, I got to actually be friends with Dreamer. So the first time I wrestled him, it was funny. I was like, oh, you came full circle now. You could retire. But um, being around... You know, Matt, you can't have any regrets. Now that, you know, you, you spoke about helping train Bull Dread, if there comes a time when you decide to hang up the boots, would you ever, would that be something that you'd be interested in, is possibly helping train the future generations of wrestlers? Oh, absolutely. You know, I've, I've got an open invitation to go down to a few of the local schools and help out whenever I have the free time. It's just having the free time absolutely. to do it. and. Uh, you know, I've, I've got to help people like Velvet Sky along when she first broke in. Mercedes Martinez, who's the best woman wrestler that was never under contract. Um, Old Red, Joseph Von Schmidt. You know, it, it, and it's good to see that these guys have taken it and girls and brought it to the next level. So, of course, I would, I would always want to help where I could help. Now, Ron, do you still? I mean, do you still keep up with uh, everything that's happening all over TV? Because now, wrestling today, I mean, it, it's it's on what like three or four times a week, three different stations. You know, it's online everywhere. They have totally different shows every. You know, anything you go to or anything social media, wrestling is everywhere. Uh, now, you grew up, you know, in pro wrestling. Uh, you know, as a kid watching it, do you feel wrestling today? I mean. Is it the same, or do you think that it's kind of getting too entertainment-esque in a way? I mean, do, do you think we're losing that wrestling aspect where now it's just we're trying to entertain people in a ring? Do, we're losing that wrestling aspect, but it's it's a vicious circle. You know, in in the 80s, WWE lost the wrestling aspect when they're going with just the, the pokey gimmicks, you know, Duke the Dumpster Trosi and... And the blacktop bully, and there, there's just everything was just a corny gimmick. So it, it's always full swing. I'm sure it's going to come back around again. I, I get why they're doing what they're doing now. I can't say I'm the biggest fan of what's going on now, but I, I still enjoy it. You know, because you get the diamonds in the rough, you get a, you get a, a Bray Wyatt who is mm-hmm. the biggest breath of fresh air in wrestling in the past ten years. Yeah. Um, you get guys like Jericho that still pop up and, you know, could still entertain with the best of them. So I, I understand where they're going. Um, I, I watch Raw every week. I haven't watched SmackDown in a while. Um, honestly, I hate to say it. I have a hard time watching TNA. I've got a lot of friends there, but it's just, it's just so unorganized. It's so hard to watch. Now, the- I, I watch when I can. The, the biggest thing that's in the world of professional wrestling these days, and everyone talks about it, is the the actual network, the WWE network. Do you Are you a subscriber to that? Oh, yeah, I'm definitely a subscriber. Um, and so what are, like, the day that you got the network, what was the first thing that you wanted to watch? Here I am as, as the mark. The first thing I searched was Mick Foley to see what they had for uh, Cactus on there. Okay. And I wanted to pull my hair out <laughs> out of mankind because I couldn't get a good signal and it kept <laughs> buffering and it kept freezing and like everybody had. Yes. But then I went back and watched a couple old pay-per-views and uh, I watched, I, I was a really, really big fan of NWA, early WCW, mm-hmm. you know, the Horsemen, stuff like that. So go back, see, see stuff like, you know, 
Flair and Kim Sullivan and Arn Anderson, Barry Windham. You know, I, I, that's the stuff I really enjoyed as a wrestling fan. It's just, you know, pure wrestling, not entertainment value wrestling, just excellent wrestling. And I was just always drawn to guys like that. So that's something I definitely searched for on the network when I first got it. Then, you know, really big fan when Legends House came out. Cause who doesn't love watching Roddy Piper act crazy? Yes. Uh, now, Ron, too, speaking about today's wrestling, uh, really quick, uh, you, you mentioned Bray Wyatt. Are there any other favorites that you have going on today right now? Or, I mean, is Bray that one character that's kind of really standing out uh, compared I, to the rest? I think Damien Sandow is completely misused. I think he could be a major star. Um, I, I like him a lot, and I don't think they're using him properly. Uh, same with Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler should be the top guy, you know, and I don't think they're using him properly. Uh, there's a ton of great talent, and I think a lot of it's misused. That's just my humble opinion. You know, how many times can you? See, and John Cena is great for business, and John Cena is a phenomenal human being for being those for children. But how many times could you see him on top of a pay per view? Dean Ambrose is another one that, if, if not used improperly, should be a monster. Mm hmm. And I mean, like, that almost goes back to my question, too, before. I mean, uh, with wrestling today, is that a lot of these guys are great wrestlers, but at the same time, it's like they're making them, you know, jump, jump through hula hoops and uh, do all this, you know, entertainment fun stuff. It's almost like, you know, they did something in the back to piss somebody off, and now they're making them into, like, this little circus clown, like like Damian Sandow. I mean, one one year ago yesterday was the year that he cashed in his money in the bank to go against Cena, and now one year later, you know, he's tag-teaming with Miz, and he's not really quite, you know, a broke... He didn't really break out from uh, anything he was doing, and it's a shame, I think, and... Uh, uh, I don't know where I'm going with this, but I think I'm venting a little bit of frustration too with what you were saying, how these guys are misused. That's understandable. <laughs> you know, cause as, a, as a fan, I want to see these guys succeed. I want to, you know, mm -hmm. a little biased with Sando being a Kowalski guy, but, you know, he, he deserves it. He, he can talk. He can wrestle. He's got a good look, and they can't find anything better to do with him. Yeah. You know, it boggles my mind. Now, you were this year inducted in the uh, 2014 class of the New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame and Fan Fest. Um, and it was established in 08 and select, you know, to honor select personalities in the Northeast uh, New England area. So, do you feel like that's got to be, I mean, for me, that's got to be one of the highlights of your careers? That was definitely a huge honor. And what made it even better was uh, I went in with the guys I broke in with, Curtis Slamdog and the Mercenary, the guys that are, are more than family to me. And uh, we, we traveled the roads together. We learned the ropes together. And to be put in alongside the two of them was... I couldn't... I, I'm speechless now talking about it. It was just such an honor. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm not... I'm humble. I'm not one for, you know, put myself out there and say, oh, look at me, look at me. Except for I'm standing in the middle of the ring, obviously, I want you to look at me. Yes. But to to be bestowed that alongside my two brothers and to have Dylan Cage come up from North Carolina insisting that no one else was going to do it. He, he, on his own dime, came from North Carolina to induct me in. You know, I, I couldn't have asked for anything more. Lightning Brown. Favorite horror movie? Loaded question. I've got so many, but the first <laughs> thing that came to the top of my head was Devil's Rejects. All right. Okay. Um, favorite band? Metallica. Barbed Wire. And, and, uh, and, and Quick Slate Push. I do play a Metallica cover band, Alcoholica. Not the Canadian one. Alcoholicatribute.com. Check us out. Awesome. Uh, barbed Wire or Chair Shots? Uh barbed wire because I can't do it that much anymore because uh, Northeast Wrestling is family friendly <laughs> um, best show or movie about zombies Walking Dead Bull Dread Hard Worker Heavy Metal or Death Metal Heavy Metal not Death Metal fan Weapon of Choice in a Zombie Apocalypse Barbed wire baseball bat. The f your favorite match of all time that you weren't involved in yourself. Flair Funk, I quit. 
And one opponent for Ron Zombie, if you had a match tomorrow, who would it be? Past or present? Bruiser Brody. Bruiser Brody seems to still be alive. Boy, 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 boy. If you're listening to this interview and you're saying, I don't know enough about this guy, I want to know more, where can the fans find out more about Ron Zombie? Uh, you can get my Facebook. Um, just search Ron Zombie. My real name will pop up, and you can get me under there. Um, you know, I've got a ton of things going on besides Northeast Wrestling. I'm uh, I perform in three bands, as I already plugged, Alcoholica, uh, Nasty Disaster, Heavy Metal Band, and Big Ed, a rock band. And I was actually just uh, did my first feature role in a, in a horror movie called Pinwheel that uh, should be coming out very shortly. I, I unfortunately got the role because uh, Ox Baker was too ill to perform in it, and uh, I took Ox's role, and about a week after we wrapped is when he passed. So you said that, that you think it should be coming out soon. Is there a, a website for that? We, or? we just we just wrapped filming. Uh, there's a Facebook page, and there's an IMDB pinwheel um, is the name. We just wrapped, so I know they're in uh, production now, and it should probably be out within the next few months. All right. Well, that was definitely an awesome interview from none other than Ron Zombie. Um, I don't know what kind of Halloween show we would have if we didn't have some sort of zombie uh, ghost or ghoul on it. So That's right, Jonathan. It's not Halloween without a zombie, pretty much. Yeah, and, uh, you know, definitely check him out in, in the Northeast here. He's uh, all, over the, all over the place. So do yourself a favor, check out the hardcore icon Ron Zombie. And now... Uh, without further ado, joining us in the AWP studios is you. You know, you may call her Karma, you may call her Awesome Kong. Uh, we call her Kia, and uh, we can't wait to talk to her. So, joining us now, Kia Stevens. All right, joining us tonight, we have the lovely Kia Stevens, formerly known as Awesome Kong, and Karma. Uh, Kia, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for having me. Thank you to all your listeners as well. Yeah, uh, well, let's get right into it. We hear that you have a new Kickstarter campaign called The Good Karma Tracker. Can you give us some more information on that? Yes, uh, The Good Karma Tracker is the working title um, right now, and basically it's a website, or it will be a website once we raise the funds, that will help you track your good deeds. So um, a lot of people that do a good deed and ask one to pay it forward, they usually wonder if that, that's ever been done. Uh, with this, you get to see if indeed they paid it forward uh, with a token, with a serial number uh, that you give to them at the time that you ask them to pay it forward. They would then go into the site and then enter, you know, what you did for them and then what they did for someone else. Wow. Uh, we have a lot of great rewards on the Kickstarter um, campaign website, and uh, all your listeners can go to my Twitter page, at Karma, at K-H-A-R-M-A, and click on the link and check it out. All right. All right, now, we've seen some photos of you recently, and I have to say, you look better than ever. Um, what have you been doing to keep yourself in shape? Well, that was a few months ago. I actually, <laughs> I actually uh, uh, got a little holiday weight before the holidays going on right now <laughs> due to uh, an injury, a back injury that has flared up and is in cast, you know, you know, preventing me from working out as as stringent as I'd like. But um, b- before the, the the picture that you're referring to. I was hitting up the DDP yoga every day, wow. and oh. I was maintaining an extremely balanced diet, and it, it really, really, it really helped me and just shed melted, melted pounds away really wow. fast. Wow, Jonathan, we really got to hit up this DDP yoga, man. It's it works for everybody, and uh, I don't know, we got to get onto that. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, uh, now, Kia. <laughs> now, Kia uh, really you, you, do. It's it's yeah. really awesome because you don't leave your house. You just pop in the DVD. Yeah. <laughs> And work it out. Awesome. Uh, now, we understand you growing up in California. Uh, were you always a fan of pro wrestling growing up as a, as a young karma, as we could say? <laughs> uh, uh, but my brother was a wrestling fan first in the house. 
Um, you know, while I play, play with my Barbie dolls, he watched wrestling and played with his, you know, action figures. Um, and it wasn't until he he would torture me every Saturday that <laughs> I began watching wrestling myself. And the next time he, he came at me doing the moves that the PSA says that you should not try at home, kids. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I flipped it on him and uh, turned a, a camel clutch into a Boston crab. Um, and from then on, we would just watch wrestling together in mutual respect, and I loved it. And then after the wrestling, the, the cartoon came on. <laughs> 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 and so Saturday was really special for wrestling in my house. So, so I think it's safe to say too that he probably doesn't want to fight you today, right? Probably not. <laughs> <All right. laughs> probably not. Now, um, who would you say the woman that had the most impact on you in pro wrestling is? Now, it could be somebody that you know from the old days, somebody now. Um, who do you think would be the most influ- influential woman? for you? Well, well personally, um, my Kawakumiko um, was the most influential, is the most influential woman for me mm-hmm. because we worked so close together and when I went to Japan, she took me under her wing and she made sure I was okay and any questions or anything that I needed or if I was having a hard time or if I missed home, she either, you know, put a boot in my ass or wipe the tears away. So, you know, she was there to just really mold mold my, you know, character and my growing up in wrestling. So for her, I modeled what I do in wrestling after her. All right. Um, now, we said woman. So who would you say the man is that had the most impact on you in pro wrestling? Oh, well, that's a trifecta. Okay. Um, <laughs> Mick Foley, The Rock, and Stone Cold Steve Austin are the three. That those are definitely three <laughs> major ones, I would say. Yes, that, those are the ones that really made me go, "Okay, I'm I'm, I'm jumping in this. I'm, I'm I'm jumping in." All right, now uh, you you trained in Japan. We know uh, you you achieved tons of success both as a singles competitor and as part of a tag team. Uh, which did you like better? I love the tag team. I loved working as a tag team and telling stories as a tag team and having that chemistry as as a tag and and building momentum up and you know you got the hot tag and it's just you know a lot of a lot of things that you do with that. Um, especially in TNA, uh, it was a very short reign Hamada and I had with the the, the title belt. But, um, or no, no, I don't even think we had, yeah, we did. Yeah. Yep. Hello. Yep. <laughs> Wake up, Kia. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, we had a really good match, um, with, uh, Black Angel and Taylor Wilde. Uh-huh. Um, and it was, it was, it was awesome. It was just that chemistry for the tag match and you got the lucha style and then you had the Canadian style and you know, you had the Japanese style going on in there. And, uh, that, that was a lot of fun. I think you've won so many wrestling titles that you forgot that you've, which yeah, ones you've won. A half a second there. I seriously had to think, wait, did I hold this? <laughs> yeah, okay. I did. Okay. Yeah, I did. So when you wrestled in Japan and when you wrestled in America, do you feel that you're like when you were there that the companies in the U S put more on your appearance than less more focus on your appearance than wrestling, I guess, than Japan would. Um, no, no. Um, I think they put more on other girls appearance. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yes. And mine, my job was to be intimidating and, you know, um, massive (laughs) that's what I you know that's what I did be intimidating and massive but for other girls it was more about you know you know their looks you know I I could I could fluctuate a little bit but if you know someone like um, Angelina Love gained 40 pounds that'd be that'd be a problem yes yes 
All right. Now, uh, after coming back to America, you became not only a mainstay in TNA, but you really helped to start their women's division. Uh, What was the best thing to come out of you working in TNA? Um, I would have to say what people say to me all the time when I meet them and do appearances and signings and things, and that was the feud with Gail Kim. Absolutely. And the respect that the fans now have for the knockout division. Um, Now, it's been stated in several interviews that you felt uh, that the Japanese style of pro wrestling is a lot tougher than what we call the, you know, the American style. Why is it? I mean, I've not obviously been there to watch it. So what makes Japanese wrestling tougher than the United States version? Um, well, there, there, there is a strong style um, in Japan, uh, very hard-hitting. Uh, and, and, you know, they have the model of the fighting spirit and, you know, go, go, go. Mm-hmm. In America, you have a very mixed rainbow of attitudes towards wrestling. Some of these girls are in wrestling just for the glamour of it, and some of us mean business for the actual wrestling of it, just like any other worker, you know, like the the males do. So when you have someone that really can't endure that style, then you must adjust and, you know, some of these girls don't have the heart, but some of them also prefer to work smarter and not as dangerous because it is dangerous and it does take a toll on your body. So, you know, there are different mm. attitudes that people have about how that style. People that work in the American style, they have a better chance of prolonging their career. Mm-hmm. Um, the girls in Japan, they were forced to retire at 25 for wow. a while there for years you know, decades and decades. At 25, you had to retire. So you could do 10 years and tear up your body for for that 10 years because you're going to retire with a nice, you know, mm-hmm. nest egg. That's not the case nowadays. Yeah. Uh, following up on that, uh, you've been injured over the years. Uh, what would you consider your worst pro wrestling injury? And did it ever make you think twice about being a, a pro wrestler? Uh, two. Uh, the bulging, the two bulging discs that I have now, and when I first, <laughs> my second match in Japan, which was a main event match versus Momo Nakanishi at Corrigan Hall, she jumped from the top rope onto the floor onto me in, in a nice little plancha, and I caught her, and my ankle snapped. Oh. And it just, you know, swole up, it, it just so big and for months and this is you know i'm new to the business i just know how to run the ropes throw a lariat and take a bump at this point <laughs> and i had to learn on a severely sprained ankle until this day it's really hard for me to do a, a left uh, three-quarter roll because i had to do everything on the right because my ankle was so jacked up wow um after a very successful career in TNA, you finally made it to WWE. Um, after some amazing vignettes, uh, I still look them up every now and then just to watch them. Uh, you debuted to some amazing fanfare. Were you happy with the way that you were brought in? Oh, of course. I don't, I don't think they could have brought me in any better. I think that it was extremely exciting. If you were given, I mean, in WWE, actually, you were given an opportunity to talk also, which was somewhat uncharacteristic of your character before. Um, were you, ex- <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I know I was excited to hear from you, and you didn't disappoint. So were you excited with to get that opportunity? I was extremely nervous because, one, um, I, I think I talked one time, in TNA, and it was like a monster killed princess, and it was like yes. two sentences, and so it was easy. That was easy. They had a whole monologue for me at, mm-hmm. at WWE, which I was not used to, and they came to me, you know, what, like uh, two hours beforehand, handed me a script and said, this is what you're going to do today. And I was like, oh, okay. Because uh, remember, didn't do that in TNA. 
didn't do that in Japan. Um, didn't have. Uh, I was fortunate enough to just get a to get a booking contract right away. So I never got to hone my promo cutting skills like most people do in developmental. So I, I got thrown out there. You know, it's like sink or swim. Hmm. But I've been used. I've been used to that because that was what happened when I first got to Japan. I was, my first match was a main event match, and it was like sink or swim. So. Hmm. Um, I've got the paddling. I'll do paddles. <laughs> All right. Uh, speaking of WWE, you know, you are one of only three women to have ever entered the Royal Rumble. Uh, do you look at that as one of the highlights of your career so far? Yes. Uh, if, if someone has, like, a snarky comment uh, to make about me, in, in virtually anything, it doesn't even have to be wrestling related. I'll just go, you know what? Uh, you know, how many Royal Rumbles do you have? Okay. <laughs> I rest my case. I just won the argument. <laughs> <laughs> um, now there's a there's currently a huge resurgence uh, resurgence rather in women's wrestling. Uh, who are you some Who are some of your favorites in the world today? Well, um, Jessica Havoc is making a big splash over there at TNA, and I am I am rooting for her. Paige. Um, you know, knowing her before she got to WWE and her family and knowing her skills, I am really excited about, you know, her emergence in WWE. And uh, she she really makes me want to jump through the screen and participate. All right. Uh, now, you hinted on Twitter earlier this year that you may be writing a book. Uh, have you gotten any closer to publishing maybe an autobiography you could tell your fans about? I have pinned a lot of things because there's so much to tell and it's hard to pick and choose what to put out first, mm -hmm. you know, what to put out as far as what I consider the most important thing about me first. Cause I, I have led so far a very interesting <laughs> <laughs> dynamic life and I have a lot of stories to tell. So uh, originally I wanted to do like a dozen stories because this year's um, this month actually would be twelve years of wrestling for me. Wow! And uh, uh, but I decided that this Kickstarter, this idea that would not leave me alone, um, was going to come first. Okay, now this would be a very uh, rare opportunity, but let's just say that you got to pick every aspect of how you're going to retire. Um, who would you want to face for your last match, and what promotion would you like to end your career with? Ooh. Oh, last last tango. I I, I would face Nanae Takahashi. Okay. Um, I I would love to invite her into the WWE ring. Would that? I mean, that would have be, to be at WrestleMania, right? That'd be. I have to be at WrestleMania. It's a tie. It's a toss up between her and Sarah Del Rey. Oh well. Uh, speaking of Sarah Del Rey, uh, you know, currently at the WWE Performance Center, uh, she is training the next generation of divas. Now, do you think you could transition from the ring to more of a trainer role one day? I think I could. I think I have a lot to offer um, as far as character and you know charisma wise you know, the people say you can't teach charisma but if you have enough heart you know you could teach someone almost anything i think sarah is the absolute best technical wrestler out there there's no one out there better than her <laughs> so they've got that covered i think i have a lot to contribute as far as you know going in there and telling a story with your face and with your body Lightning Lightning round. Round. What is your favorite game show? Wheel of Fortune, because I was on it. Okay, Japan is notorious for having wrestlers on some strange merchandise. What's the craziest thing your face has ever been on? A spoon. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> what, what is your favorite thing about Japan? The people. TNA. Backstage Harmony. All right. Favorite woman to work with? <laughs> Hikaru. Least favorite. Um, an actress. She's okay. Across, an actress 
an athlete, and we used to have him in Japan. Anybody that considers themselves an athlete, I, I didn't care to work with. Okay. All right. Now, favorite match you were a part of? It was so oh, a <laughs> toss-up between the Royal Rumble and the match I had in TNA with, um, it was a live event overseas, intergender, me and Team 3D versus Scott Steiner, Booker T, and Charmel. And I got to body slam Charmel. I got to make out with Devon in the middle of the ring. And then afterwards, Mick Foley came out and serenaded the song to me. That is amazing. Um, Shimmer. Uh, revolutionary. A karma comeback? Hopefully. <laughs> and lastly, your favorite moment in the ring so far? That is it's unfair. There's too many. <laughs> um, I, I have to say, giving Dolph Ziggler my signature move, that was awesome because he is freaking awesome. Oh.